In one dimension, the electric and the magnetic fields can only change in one direction. So this means that our source would have to be a plane wave that is propagating straight downwards. And the material properties would also only be allowed to change in one direction. So we, we would have, here would be the snow surface. The body would have to be a plane. And then somewhere down here, we would still have the ground. By initially reducing the problem to one dimension, now we only need to solve Maxwell's equations in one dimension. Let's assume that the downward direction here is the x direction. This means that the electric and the magnetic fields can only change in the x direction. So now let's look at what this geometry simplification does to simplify the two equations we want to solve, Ampere's and Faraday's laws. Taking the time domain pointwise form of Faraday's law first, and writing b is equal to mu times h, we have the curl of e is equal to minus mu dh dt. If we evaluate the three-dimensional curl operation on the left side of this equation in Cartesian coordinates, we get what's written here on the top of the slide. Hopefully you've seen this before. If not, I can go over it with you later. Just let me know. Since our plane wave is propagating in the x direction, any partial derivatives with respect to y and z are going to be zero because the fields don't change in that direction. So we can cancel all these. These are all going to be equal to zero. And we're just left with two possible terms. What this means is that the electric field of our propagating wave can be pointing in the y direction, or the z here's the y direction electric field, or it can be pointing in the z direction, or it can be have some combination of the two. For simplicity, let's just say our plane wave is z polarized meaning the electric field is oriented along the z-axis. So that means we're left with just this one component. So based on the geometry that we have chosen and also the orientation of polarization of our plane wave, we can say the curl operator here, uh, operation on E, the electric field, is going to be minus y hat de z dx, because all the other terms are going to be equal to zero. Well, going back to Faraday's law, this is equal to minus mu dh dt. So if the left side of Faraday's law only has a y component, then the right side of Faraday's law must also have a y component. So that means we can write this as minus mu and dh y dt. Notice I'm not putting a vector over the components when I have e, z, for example. The direction is given by the z subscript. So here when we write e more generally, it has a vector uh, on top of it to show that it has a direction. So putting all this together, we have, there's a minus sign in front, de z dx is equal to minus mu dhy dt, and we can cancel the negative signs on both sides. By the way, these two components we've come up with, ez and hy, also agree with the right-hand rule. The magnetic field must be pointing along the y direction if the electric field is oriented along the z direction, if the wave is propagating in the x direction. To solve for the propagation of our z polarized wave propagating in the x direction, this is one equation that we need to solve. To come up with the second equation that we need to solve, we can go through the same process for Ampere's law, where we have the curl of h is equal to j plus epsilon de dt. For the moment, let's consider the propagation of the electromagnetic wave through free sp space, so in the air region between the radar antenna and the snow. There aren't any electrons flowing in the air region, so we're going to say j here is equal to zero. 
and we're just left with what's there. See if you can develop the form of Ampere's law that we need to solve for our 1D problem geometry with the wave propagating in the X direction, so X direction propagation, and the electric field is Z polarized.